Welcome to the first episode of the Quip Corners Book Corner as we celebrate World Book and Copyright Day this year. As you already know, this is the third season and it's with great delight. I invite you to join my first guest who's been here before in the Quip Corners Book Corner. You'll see her bio right after this. Please join us in the Quip Corner. See you in a bit. To the Quip Corners Book Corner, Miss Linda. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. It's always a joy and a pleasure. <laughs> Likewise, yeah. So, you know, we exchanged a couple emails and then we landed on one of your books that we're going to be talking about today. Yes, who we'll put the vinegar in the salt? <laughs> <laughs> your book titles really tickle me. They really, really tickle me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, what's the backstory? What made you write this book? And then you'll tell us what's in it. What made you write it? Well, one day I was uh, baking and I dropped my salt shaker into the little bit of vinegar. Okay. And, and it kind of seeped into, into the salt. And it just, you know, it ruined it. Mm -hmm. and, and I just... I threw it out, you know, if somebody said, well, I could at least sanitize the salt shaker and then reuse the salt shaker, but I just threw out the whole thing. <laughs> and that reminded me of the verse um, that uh, Jesus tells us that you are the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its flavor, it's no good, but, but to be trampled on. Yes. And I started thinking about how a, a modern day Christianity we tend to incorporate world wisdom into our spiritual wisdom. And then really? that, that, that the world's wisdom, I mean, it's good. It's got a lot of good points and everything. It has its purpose and function, but it is not the God intended salt that he wants us to be. And what we've done is incorporate that, uh, that vinegar of the world's wisdom into the wisdom that God would have infused in us to mm -hmm. be his true salt. Wow. So I started writing and it took about five years to get this book written, but <laughs> it's, it's here. Uh, well, it's here. part of it was, was my hesitancy. Yeah. Um, I felt I'm not, I'm not a theologian. Mm -hmm. I don't have all those letters after my name. Um, and then a friend of mine chastised me and she said, if you're a child of God, you're qualified. That's it. That's yeah. what he qualifies mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Not you qualifying yourself, but he qualifies you. Amen. So I got down and I started outlining and put it all together. And voila, and eventually we, we had a book and Elf Lake published it. So. Nice, nice. You know, you know, while you were talking, it just, you know, it just occurred to me that yes, some of the things we adopt taint who we are as Christians. Yeah. yeah. You know, and talking about not being qualified, you know, we're always reminded that God takes the foolish things of this world. So he qualifies the called. So thank you for writing the book and thank you to your friend who yes. gave thank you the push. You inspired me. <laughs> Get it down. So okay. It comes in, in two parts. Mm -hmm. And um, it, part one is, um, you know, called to be salt. Okay. What does it mean that God calls us to be the salt of the earth? It just, mm -hmm. just what does that mean? And, the, you know, and I explore the differences, you know, we tend to think of salt as our table salt that we, yeah. that we put on our food and so forth, but that's not what the salt 
uh, Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. He was talking about uh, the, the common salt that was in the uh, New Testament world. It was very abundant, but yeah. part of it wasn't very good. It had to be processed and refined and, yeah. and all that stuff. And it was so valuable mm -hmm. that the Romans paid their soldiers in salt. And that's where it was a solarium. And that's where we get our word for salary. Okay. So salt was valuable and precious. And when I think of that, I think how precious we are in God's sight. Amen. That's one of the things about being salt, you know, mm -hmm. is God's love for us and, and how precious he sees us. And then uh, we're, we're called to be new. Salt is new. Salt is uh, uh, God changes us. He, he takes us from what we were and then he makes us something new that's valuable. Amen. That is can be used um, for his glory and for mm -hmm. his purpose and for yeah. his honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And salt we helps us to be transformed. I talked about changing. Yeah. And uh, what what is transformation? Mm -hmm. And I talk about the cupcake batter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the cupcake batter. You know, um, the batter once it's cooked. It can't go back to being better again. Yes, that's it's true. Different. Yes. And and when we accept Christ, we might try to walk away, but we can never be what we were before we came to him. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's why Jesus said it's like a dog returning to his own vomit. And it's, yeah. just, you know, and it's sad, you know, because we yeah. can't be defeated. And until we come back to him and allow him to renew us. Yeah. Know? And then the other thing about cake batter is the batter is submissive to the cook. <laughs> the batter can do nothing of itself. True. The batter has to be subservient to the cook's desires and, and how the cook is going to use the batter. If the batter wants to be better. If, yeah, that's good. As a mouthful, I love that. Alliteration. If the batter wants to be better, we need to surrender. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> And then we're called for a purpose. And, and people just kind of wander around, you know, we, we talk about that in the book about what, what does it mean to when God calls us for a purpose and what things, what vinegar things get in the way of our purpose that God has uh, planned for us. And then we talk about, we're called for fellowship and man, since COVID, that, <laughs> you know, that's been a big one. Um, sure. You know, where we've allowed the vinegar of the world to, you know, uh, subsidize our fellowship with God. Yeah. You know, we're all about, well, if it's convenient for me, I'll go to church on Sunday. If it's, uh, you know, if my kids don't have a lot of sports games or I don't do this or I don't do that, they don't have to work and they don't have to, if I get up early enough, you know, it's, it's that, um, lack of, of desire to be among God's people. And I talk about what is fellowship? Mm -hmm. what, what, why does God want us to have this fellowship? What, yeah. Why is it important? Um, and then, and that, again, the last part of part one, I talk about the salt is called to be holy. Mm -hmm. God has called us to be unique and he develops us and he gives us that desire to be like him. Yeah. And, this, uh, and the vinegar says, oh, you first, God second. Okay, you have that self-actualization that we want to uh, come to ourselves, that we want to be fully developed in our personal uh, idea of who we are, um, the love of self, the, um, and then there's, you know, the, the Whitney Houston song about loving yourself was the greatest love of all. Mm. And, you know, you got Frank Sinatra's song, I did it my way, you know. <laughs> um, so we talk about that and what does it mean to be holy? Yeah. God's commandment is clear. Be yeah. holy as I am holy. So yes. Is yes. Mm -hmm. to, to be holy. Yeah. The second part of the book 
is what I call the recipe for victorious living. Mm, So that God has given us instruction, purpose, design. He's given us all the tools we need Mm -hmm. to live a victorious Christian life. Amen. But we let the vinegar of the world get in the way of that. Yeah. You know, and and so we fall short. Um, Salt transcends. God has given us the tools and the ability to transcend, to come, to overcome, to go beyond our circumstances Mm -hmm. in order to fulfill his destiny in us. Amen. And salt bears fruit. And I talk about the difference between the spiritual gifts, plural, but uh, the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. It's singular, and it is all encompassing. Encompassing, yeah. yeah. It's not just one thing out of uh, seven things. It's, yeah. It's everything. All together. Uh, package deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and salt endures. We, you know, God has given us the tools to continue in spite of our circumstances. And uh, we talk about how salt satisfies. Mm. And our life with God is so satisfying. Yeah. If we allow him. But what, what happens when we look to the wisdom of the world, it, it you know, cuts into our feelings of satisfaction. Yes. Uh, in our walk with God. Mm-hmm. And, and salt overcomes. I talked about that a little bit. And, and salt rejoices. Nice. And lastly, salt loves. Well, that's basically the concept of the book. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's, it sounds really, really loaded. Really, really loaded. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I, I divided it into narrative, and then uh, under each chapter, there's a, a section for individual or group study as well. Oh, nice. Okay. Okay. That, and that's that's really helpful. Yeah. Nice. Nice. My uh, my church group, our, our a small group within our church fellowship, mm-hmm. uh, let me do a study on this so that I could see how it worked out with the individual study and so forth. And we had a great time with it. And, um, so, so that that uh, option is also in the book. And that's beautiful. And you know, one of the benefits, shall I say, of this post-COVID world is some of those studies can be done with people all over the world using your book as a guide. I've been thinking of doing actually that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sometime this spring, I want to set up uh, doing it. Um, have, you know, heading up a, a study that and just put it out there you know, um, rather than being, and let God take charge of that. Yeah, and I I, I don't see why not. They want to buy the book, fine, you know, that's up to them. Yes, Um, for sure. But it's, um, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to try doing it that way and see. Yeah, I I think, yeah, sounds like a great idea. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah. So, um, yeah, nice. It's interesting how Uh, that popped into my head, but you already had the idea. So it's almost like sometimes God says these things to confirm. (laughs) Go for it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So I know that people can get copies from your website or from Amazon or, you know, wherever else books are sold. Yes. Okay. And and it, it, I believe this book is uh, uh, with Ingram so that if they go into a bookstore Mm-hmm. And request it it can be ordered for them. ordered okay yeah. excellent excellent yeah. okay okay a lot of people don't like to shop on amazon so. yeah okay and some of my books some of my books are available in walmart as well amazon. nice yeah okay that's good to know that's good to know nice well so miss linda as we you know draw the curtains on this episode <laughs> um what word you know what do you want people to take away from reading your book be salt, not vinegar. Ask God to show you what it means to be his precious salt. Amen. Um, and, uh, you know, and live live within his wisdom rather than the wisdom of the world. Not that vinegar is bad. Vinegar has its purpose. Yes. But it is not God's design for us. 
that makes sense to people. I hope so. <laughs> it will. It will make sense. It will make sense. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate oh, it. Oh, it's so great to spend time with you again. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> it's always a delight. God okay, bless thank you. Thank you for having me. You're and welcome. Bless, and don't forget purple. <laughs> Praise the Lord and pass the purple. Yes. <laughs> God bless you. Bye now. Bye now. It's such a delight having chatted with Miss Linda. Yeah, <laughs> we were marching. Funny how God does these things. Well, her book sounds really interesting. The reminder not to be vinegar. Vinegar has its purpose, like she said, but we're not called to be vinegar. Information on how you can get copies of her book are below. And remember, they can be used for individual study or even for group study. See you again. You take care. Bye now.